So I've spent the last five years traveling across Asia to those places that hold the world's last remaining tigers. I'm a conservation scientist, and I've been trying to understand why conservation succeeds and why it fails. So I want to present to you two alternative future scenarios, one with and one without tigers, and about what our role might be in determining those futures. So let me just first start by reminding you that tigers really are in a pretty bad way. So tiger's habitat, which once stretched right across Asia, is now dwindled by 95% over the last 100 years. There's still a lot of forests left, enough, in fact, to hold some 50,000 tigers. But the remaining tigers themselves are scattered in these small populations across their former range, and much of these forests are lying empty. There's now only 3,500 tigers, wild tigers, remaining in the world. So these stats might not be a surprise to you. Conservationists these days are all about doom and gloom, right? Talking about species hurtling towards extinction. But what might surprise you is the speed at which this is actually happening right now for tigers. And even I didn't fully appreciate this five years ago. So I live in Cambodia, which is a small country in Southeast Asia, with over 50% of its land still forested. That's pretty good, right? This is one of the last tigers ever photographed or seen in Cambodia, taken just before I arrived in the country in 2007. In the 1990s, the late 1990s, almost 100 tigers were being poached a year in Cambodia. That's a lot of tigers. By the time I arrived in 2007, there were no more tigers being poached because there were no more tigers. This was a real defining moment for me. An entire tiger population of a whole country had almost disappeared in less than 10 years. 10 years, that's a time frame we can all identify with, right? So it was a defining moment for me and a rude awakening to those countries that perhaps think their tigers are doing okay. It raised the bar for conservation, held it accountable, and pressed upon us the need to be effective and quickly. But of course, it doesn't have to be that way. We talk about all of those depressing grass with declining species, but what about those places that have bucked the trend, that have turned those depressing grafts from a tipping point into a positive change? In Russia in the 1940s, the country was down to its last 30 to 40 tigers. 40 tigers. There's more tigers than that in a single national park here in Karnataka. But thanks to the efforts of a few dedicated uh, scientists and policymakers, tiger populations subsequently increased some tenfold over the following 60 years to an all-time high of about 500 tigers in the late 1990s. It wasn't rocket science. It involved a complete ban on hunting and a strengthening of anti-poaching efforts. But it also involved this national commitment to saving the tiger. So for those countries where tigers remain, securing their future is actually pretty simple. It doesn't have to involve new solutions or innovative ideas. Let's take what we know has worked and use our limited time and money wisely. For me, that means helping strengthen protection and get a better understanding of what's going on on the ground. For politicians, that means laying down the law. For everybody else, upon whose support those politicians defend, that means holding those decision makers to account. And in an increasingly materialistic world in which we live, it's also about making some basic choices, a choice to actually save the tiger. It's not enough to just assume that tigers are going to be OK. Our experiences in Cambodia shows that they're going to crash far quicker than they can recover. And why even save the tiger? Tigers represent the true diversity of our natural world across much of Asia. They occur in the frozen forests of the Russian Far East, the hot, humid forests of lowland forests in Southeast Asia, the dry forests of Indochina across much of, uh, that occur across much of India. They're a top predator. They need food. They need space. They represent all that's healthy about these natural forests and about what they provide, not just for the tigers, but for the some 12 million people that also depend on these forests. Everybody here knows something about the tiger, right? Maybe you watch it on TV, or you read about it in school. The tiger's actually part of our everyday life all across the world, be it the beer you drink, the bags you use, the planes you fly in, uh, the books you read as kids, the sports teams you support, and the religions you follow. Tigers are a potent symbol of everything we value, particularly here in Asia. So if we can't save a species that's, that's that universally known and appreciated, then what does that say about us as a society? Saving tigers isn't rocket science. Ironically, we've actually mastered rocket science, so why can't we master saving the tiger? 
Ultimately, it's all about the choices you make. You know, I'm an eternal optimist. You really have to be in conservation, believe me. You know, I visit India maybe once a year, and those visits for me are something like a tonic, a bit of a drug. This is the only tiger I have seen and photographed ever in five years of walking all over tiger countries in Asia. This was taken in Corbett National Park in India last year. For those of you who haven't experienced it, it's very hard to convey the first moment you see a wild tiger. It's a truly beautiful thing. And it really, it really convinces you right then and there that you absolutely always have to have a world with wild tigers in it. You know, my lack of tiger sightings is something I get a lot of stick from from my colleagues, but it, it makes an important point. India holds almost half of the world's remaining wild tigers in a country that's pushing one billion people with one of the fastest growing economic growth rates on the planet. India this year reported a slow but steady increase in its wild tiger population. <laughs> right, exactly. So Ind India made a very bold choice back in the 1970s when Indira Gandhi committed to saving the tiger and launched Project Tiger. And it hasn't always been a smooth road, but that gives me an awful lot of hope for a future for tigers across all of Asia. Thanks very much.